We have been discussing the two witnesses as God uses this language to describe the witness of the Bible within the churches and congregations during the church age. Revelation chapter 11 verses 3 through 6. They were the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. The idea is that the true believers have the Holy Spirit flowing in them, and therefore they are prophesying in accord with the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, that represent the Bible, the Word of God. The true believers are closely identifying with the Word of God. And we also saw how the true believers do relate and identify with the two witnesses because God would utilize the believers to proclaim the truth that was coming forth from his word. And the two witnesses are a type and a figure of Moses and Elijah. Moses representing the law of God, Elijah the prophets. Verse 6 of Revelation 11 adds additional confirmation to that idea, to that understanding that the two witnesses are typified by Moses and Elijah, because, I'll read again, it says there, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when we look at the activity that is described here and assigned to the two witnesses, this is what they will have power or authority to do from God. We see that everything mentioned here identifies with either Moses or Elijah. For instance, shutting heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Well, in 1 Kings 17, verse 1, we read of Elijah praying to God that it might not rain. And the Bible says in James 5, verse 17, it rained not for the space of three years and six months. God emphasizes that and tells us that Elijah was the prophet that he communed with that it not rain in his day. And then when we read on, and it speaks of the two witnesses have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will, well, turning water to blood and smiting with plagues is something that Moses is known for in a spectacular way as God sent him to deliver his people Israel from Egypt. And one of the first signs, one of the first things Moses was able to do by the power of God was to turn the water of Egypt to blood and then to finally smite Egypt with plague after plague after plague. And so verse 6 is confirmation that yes, Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses in a figure because they represent the law and the prophets. And the Law and the Prophets is language that God uses to describe the Word of God, the Bible itself. Well, that's fine. We can understand that. But we wonder, how is it that the two witnesses actually carried out these type of things during the church age? After the Bible was completed, we know God wasn't performing miracles as he did in Egypt God wasn't sending famine, hearkening to a prophet during the church age that it not rain as he did in the days of Elijah. So what does God mean? Well, I think that this can be understood this way, that when the Bible declares truth, that reveals falsehood, that churches and congregations and in some instances whole denominations of churches denomination is a collection of churches that are not teaching that truth, well then they are judged, they are condemned by the truth of the Word of God. Now a good example of this that maybe some of you may remember, maybe a few, is the open forum program that Mr. Camping at Family Radio taught for about 50 years. Now, back in the 80s, I remember listening in 1987 and a portion of 1988 when it was still the church age. 
And that means that the program, Mr. Camping himself, as a true believer, would have been identified with the two witnesses. That was still the period where their testimony was active, where God was still in the midst of the church, where he was blessing his word during the church age. And so now, during that program, a person would call up and they would say, I think that speaking in tongues is for today. And then Mr. Camping would go to the Bible to prove, no, no, speaking in tongues, if it were true, would be divine revelation coming from God. And look here in Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. It says, you are not to add to the words of this book or subtract from the words of this book. If you do add to them, then the plagues written herein will be added to you. In other words, if anyone thinks that God is still bringing divine revelation through a dream or a vision or a tongue, then they are in essence adding to the Bible and the Bible thereby condemns them they have dared to add a word to the completed word of God, and so the plagues written herein are upon them. And you see, in effect, what that did was it turned the waters of tongues churches to blood. Now people would know, oh, I'm never going to that church. They have another gospel. They're under the wrath of God and so forth. And also, as Revelation 22 again says, the plagues written herein are added to you if you add or subtract. And so it was as though they were plagued. And that is basically what this verse is talking about, that the two witnesses had power to turn waters to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they would. If any church went astray, if any denomination thought that they became the foundation of truth, that they were the determiners of what is true and what is not, and if any added or took away from the word of God, then it was as if the two witnesses, the word of God, condemned them and turned their waters to blood and smote them with a plague. 